Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So this is kind of a continuation from the Elegu Uno R3 basic starter kit, which I did on my channel, the find the playlist here. So we built this circuit in that tutorial series. So if you haven't done that, you might want to go and do that. So I've now got the most complete starter kit Uno R3. This one's a lot more expensive. So this kit was 15 pounds. I think I might have even paid less, but it's currently 15.99 on Amazon. This one was 48 pounds, so a lot more expensive, but apparently it comes with a lot more stuff. So let's get into it. I'm assuming that it's going to have the same basic stuff that's in the basic starter kit and then a bunch of other stuff, some extras as well, extra sensors. So I definitely don't need this CD, that's fine. Don't need this card. I've already got an Uno R3 open. Maybe I shouldn't open this one, I don't know. I've got, a few, I've actually got like two or three Uno R3s actually. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through each of the various different things that are inside the kit, just because almost every other YouTube video does that and they spend 15 minutes on it. And I'm more eager to learn about this stuff than talk about it. So yeah, you can see it there, pause it, have a look. Okay, so what I'm most interested in this kit is the LCD module and the RFID module, and then just getting comfortable with the expansion boards and mostly just the like seven segment display, remote control, that kind of stuff. So what we're gonna do is I've gone onto their website and I've downloaded their most complete starter kit version two. And then they give you this main folder here. Where they've got like a copy me first, which I assume is the library. They've got some data sheets, they've got different languages. And then, so let's go to English. And then here are all the tutorials. So in this video series, make sure you check out the playlist. We're gonna go through all of the tutorials here and hopefully, I'm hoping, by the end of this tutorial, I'll be very comfortable with the Elegu and Arduino setup. So we'll start off with the preparation. So this video will just be the introduction and the setup. We've done the introduction, so now let's just do the setup process. I'm pretty sure most of the setup process is done because it should just be the same. It should just be the same as the basic starter kit, but there may be more libraries involved. So let's take a look at it together. All right, so let's start off with the pack, packing list. This is generally going to be just a pointless thing, just looking at what's inside there. Stepper motor driver module, interesting. Is there a stepper motor included? Yeah, there is. Okay, so I'm definitely interested in that. I'm interested in the servo and the stepper motor. Okay, so that's all from there. Let's check out first look Arduino. So again, if you've done the basic starter kit, you've seen all of this stuff already, so... I'm just checking to see if there's anything new. Okay, that's fine. So just stuff about the Arduino. Again, you guys can read all of this in your own time as well. So this one just talks about the Arduino IDE, which uh, follow these instructions if you haven't already installed it. Then you got for Mac and Ubuntu, which again, we don't need, that's fine. Then we've got Blink and Add Libraries. Okay, so this is where it could possibly be different in terms of the adding of libraries. So we've got the Blink basic program there. That's the example program that we do to make the Arduino Blink. I'm not gonna go through that this time. I went through it in my starter video so you guys can watch that. If I remember to, I'll link it here. Okay, so that's all the preparation. And then let's go on to the module learning. Okay, so it seems like, yeah, it is, yeah. So we've got basically the first few lessons which are from the basic starter kit. So I'm not gonna do those here. We've got LED. I'm just gonna check if they're exactly the same, which I'm assuming they are. Yeah, so let's just check the active buzzer one. Oh, nice, they go into a passive buzzer. That's cool. Okay, so active buzzer. Yeah, it's exactly the same. I remember this one perfectly. Okay, so these first LED, RGB LED, digital input, serial monitor, and active buzzer, they're all part of the basic starter kit, so I'm not gonna go through those. Passive buzzer was not part of the basic starter kit, Tilt ball switch was, 
so I'm not going to do that. So I don't want this video to be rubbish for you. So I could end the video here and say, look, this is the setup process. But I won't. Let's actually we'll do we'll do the uh, passive buzzer. So we've got passive buzzer, and then we've got tilt ball switch servo. I'm just looking for the A LED one. Okay, so there's the A LED, two point two two. AAD with 74HC595. So the good thing here is you can see that I've got the AED set up there. I'm going to keep that there on that board because I don't fancy redoing that wiring again. When it comes time to get to that part of the tutorial, then I'll just link in the original video that I did. And you guys can follow that one if you haven't done it. Water level detection sensor. I'm interested in that. We've got some good tutorials here. Temperature and humidity. Analog joystick. Okay, even look, we even do memory, EEP ROM. Nice, okay, all right, so let's start the passive buzzer. I'm actually quite excited for this now. So one thing I've just noticed there is we have the pitches library there in the folder, which is nice. So let's just, just bring up the passive buzzer tutorial. Here it is, so lesson six, passive buzzer. In this lesson, you will learn how to use a passive buzzer. The purpose of the experiment is to generate eight different sounds. Nice, eight different sounds. Each sound lasting 0 0.5 seconds from alto, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, to treble, do. <laughs> I assume these are musical um, sounds. I don't, I don't I don't know anything about music or singing. So, alto, di, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, treble, do. Okay, you got the hertz there. So we just need the Uno R3, the passive buzzer, and then two female to male wires. Okay, Fe female to male DuPont wires. So we just need two of them. Okay. So the passive buzzer, the working principle of the passive buzzer is using pulse, pulse width modulation, generating audio to make the air, audio to make the air to vibrate. Okay. <laughs> Uh, trying to make that make sense in English. So we're using PWM to make a sound by vibrating the air. Okay, got it. Appropriately changed. What? Appropriately changed. So I, I was full of praise of the last tutorials, the basic starter kit, because the English was great. This isn't getting off to a good start at all. Appropriately changed as long as the vibration frequency. What? Okay, it can generate different sounds. For example, sending a pulse of 523 hertz, it can generate alto do pulse of 587 hertz. It can generate mid range. Uh, okay. We should be careful not to use the Uno R3 analog write functions to generate a pulse. The active buzzer to the active buzzer because the pulse output of analog write is fixed 500 hertz. Okay, so. We don't use analog write for active buzzers. We use digital write, I assume. And so here for the passive buzzer, we're going to use analog write. I assume that's what they're saying. So there's the schematic. We've got pin D8. So we've got digital pin 8 to the buzzer. It doesn't seem to be polarized and then just going to ground. Why are buzzer to Uno R3? The red positive. The red to pin 8 and to ground. Okay. All right, let's give it a go then. So I've got my Uno R3 here, got my cable. Um, let's now look for our passive buzzer. So it says it here, doesn't it? Uh, can you spot it before me? Up there. So hope, oh, okay. I was thinking that, I was thinking the diagram correlated with the box holes, but it doesn't. So just gonna have to find it myself. So it's like that. Oh, they've given us a bigger breadboard. Thank you. I appreciate that. That small breadboard in the basic style kit is a bit useless. I'm not a fan of that at all. Got a big breadboard. Oh, nice. Okay. So the buzz is going to be inside here, isn't it? That looks like that's the buzz there. But... 
I remember them mentioning there was a difference between the active buzzer and the passive buzzer. So it does actually appear that this buzzer is polarized because it's got a positive sign there. So that would indicate that it's polarized. And I do remember in the last, in the basic starter kit, it mentioned that the black one was active and the circuit, they said green, but I think this is blue, was passive. So I assume this circuit indicates that this is the passive one. So I think, so I think this is the difference. So you've got, they've put this seal over the passive one. So you know the difference. And then if you look at the bottom, the passive one is all passive. Sorry, I keep saying passive. The active one is just plain black and passive one has some circuitry. So this is the one that we need. It's nice that they give you, you know, these, these little kits, um, containers. I find these containers very, very useful. I'll show you what I've got on my wall. So I've got this this attached to the wall where I keep all of my components in there. So this, if you can afford it, get it. It's very, very good. I um, I got, I got this on Amazon, I think, and it's just got two screws in the back there that you mount to the wall. So I keep all of my components in there. But if I didn't have that, something like this little plastic thing is really, really good. All right, so we've got our buzzer now. So let's get our it says male to female wires this time. So, so these are the male to female ones. You've obviously got the male one, female. So we'll use two of these. I'm gonna try and stick to my color scheme as normal. So black for ground, and then we'll go red for positive. Okay, so we've got our Uno, we've got our breadboard, our buzzer. So let's just connect our buzzer in. So take the positive end, okay, there you can see. So. I'll put it in 35 and 38. So there's a gap of two between them. So 35, 36, 37, 38. So push that one down. Now we can take our positive. So usually you'd power the positive rail and then a the negative rail, but we don't need to do that here because it's just one, it's a one component thing. So, so put that positive into 35 and this into 38, which is ground. Okay. So now what's interesting is that they're not getting us to, you know, we're using the female wires. So I can only assume that we're going to be connecting it into one of the actual pins because how are we getting it into these? I don't get that because it said digital eight, right? Digital eight would be there. So let's have a look. Maybe I'm, I'm thinking it could be a mistake on the PDF. Yeah, it's a mistake. So it says male to female wires, but it doesn't make any sense. It's got to be male to male because you're connecting the buzzer into eight and into ground. Yeah, digital eight and ground. So this, this uh, PDF is not going well at all right now. If this is your first time using this kit, I would just say that this is not my experience of the basic kit. But right now this sucks. So these are the male to male wires. This is what makes sense to use in my opinion. I can't see how we're gonna use the male to female wires. So let me just cut this. So I'll put all of these over here and then I'll just get red for positive and black for negative. Okay, so let's start again. So we've got black into, we said 38 it was. All right, and then red into 35 okay and then we're connecting our red to our digital pin 8 digital pin 8 and then black into ground there you go don't worry about pushing them all the way in sometimes they don't go to the end that's fine okay and then we just need to power the arduino so this one as you can see it's blinking that just shows that it's, it comes pre-installed with the blinking uh, app on the Arduino, so or blinking program, I should say. Then passive buzzer in here, and then passive buzzer. There you go. So here's the passive buzzer code. So now I should just be able to just hit upload, and you can see it finishing there. All right. So it's got no pitches file. Okay. I'm not sure why. I think it wants me to have the pitches header, which is, I assume gonna be in this one here. Pitches, okay, so there we've got pitches.h. So let's um, extract that into this folder 
and then I don't know maybe uh, copy this pictures header and put it into the same folder as your code I assume maybe this maybe it mentions this in instruction instructions I don't know I'm just going with the flow myself hit upload again see what happens this hashtag include is telling you that it wants to go and fetch another file okay so it didn't work in terms of my ports so I assume I didn't set it up over here so tools and then port and then so it's in com6 Arduino Uno then hit upload again so this is a good thing you get you guys get to see me make all of these mistakes there we go That's actually quite enjoyable. So it's playing a beep and then waiting for about 500 milliseconds. And then playing a slightly higher tone beep. I like that. Can change the sound slightly by covering the hole. <laughs> okay, enough um, messing about. Let's take a look at the code. Can I, how can I? So I want to pause it, right? But I don't currently know a way that I can pause. You can hit this reset button here, but what that does is just reset the program. So probably the best thing to do would be to just disconnect it from ground like that. Okay, so let's take a look at this code. Um, so we're just learning this. If, if you don't know C++, we're learning it together, so don't worry about it. So here we've got, you know, they're declaring some variables here. This, these are the different notes, and then also declaring a duration variable as 500 for 500 milliseconds. So I assume we're going to be calling these variables often. So we've got a setup function that's empty, so we're not setting up any pins or anything, it appears. And then we've got our loop program here. It's very short actually, so that's the whole code. And we've got a for loop saying int this note is equal to zero. And then it's saying if, so this is a for loop, if this note is less than eight, then increase the variables to make it zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then stop. Okay, and then we've got tone, which is some sort of uh, function that I assume appears in the header file. Then we've got eight melody. Okay, and then it's telling you which melody it should play from this note. So play the melody zero, play the melody one, melody two, melody three, melody four. I don't know why it goes to seven because we're, are we going seven times with this beeping? I doubt it. And then we're waiting 500 milliseconds. Uh, oh no, play it for 500 milliseconds, okay? And then we'll be delaying one second. Okay, got it. So we're playing the tones in here for 500 milliseconds, then we're delaying it for one second. Um, okay, do that loop seven, eight times. Do this, play this. So will it... Interesting, okay. Will it play the different tones eight times then wait for two seconds and then start the whole program again i wonder um okay let's do this right so i'm going to try this is the delay before resetting it so if i make this a hundred thousand basically it shouldn't reset the code it should just do this eight times and then stop eight times is a bit long and I'm, we're gonna to have to listen to a lot of beeps so let's make it two times so we're going to make it go through all of the tones twice and then pause for whatever um, 100,000 milliseconds is. And that's 1,000 seconds. And then start the whole program again. So we should just hear a long... It should just... To us, it should just do this twice and then stop. So let's hit... Up, up. Firstly, let's connect my ground again. 
So connect to the ground, hit upload. Okay. So we're expecting this sequence twice. Okay, no, it just played two times twice. Interesting. All right, let me change that. So this is, I made this two and I only played it twice and then stopped for 100,000 seconds. So let me change this back to a second and hit upload again. Okay. So this controls how many beeps it plays. So if I make it one, it should just play one beep. Or how many tones, I should say. Yeah, just one. Okay. Um, what if I make it ten? Does it only have eight in there? Will it? Okay, there you go. So it wasn't happy with something there. Six, seven, eight. <laughs> I think it ran out of beeps. <laughs> I don't know if you, hopefully you hear that, but I'll put you right next to it. Okay, so let's take a look at the error. It threw up some sort of error. It still ran the code, but... Okay, so I can't really read the error. Just disconnect this ground again. Okay, regardless, it didn't like maybe it's because it is eight. So Let's see if I want to see if I can take a look into this picture's header file. So let's open it up with Notepad. Hmm. Okay. So it's got different. It's defining. Hmm. Okay. Let's have a look back in this code here. So we've got Note C six, Note B five, Note A five. So I could probably change these notes. So there's quite a few things you could do here to, to mess with it. So let's um, let's firstly make that eight again, right? And then what we could do is we've got the duration that we're playing the sound for. So let's make this, wait, okay, wait, 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 wait. Leave that as 500 for now. So this restart is what, how long, I don't know what this one's what this freestyle is doing. Let me just upload again and reconnect the ground. Oh wait, one second. So just uh, I should probably mention in case you didn't see the other tutorials, what I like to do when I'm learning to to program is I like to mess with the code. For example, like it always sticks with me what my lecture said. He said, "Hammer, try and break the code." And so I always, if I just if you, if me and you now just upload this code, let it go, and then skip to the next one, more than likely you're not going to learn anything from the tutorial. And if I ask you in four weeks' time, what does this code do, you'd have no idea. So it can be difficult, especially you know if you're not really comfortable with, with coding. But try and just change something, and just you know, like trial and error. I that's how I basically look at it. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. What I'm thinking about doing. So we've got this delay. I want to figure out what this delay does. I'm also thinking of so reducing this and changing this. I'm going to reduce and change this. And then I'm also going to reduce and change this. And then I'm going to go into this file, this notepad file. And I'm going to swap some of these with these and see if we get different tones. So first, let me try and figure out what this restart one's doing. And then once I've done those three things, then we'll move on to the next tutorial. But at least I'll have a decent understanding. So I'm going to plug back in the ground now. Okay, so hit, let's hit upload. So this is just normal. So if I make this 10,000, what happens? So 
are still going as normal. So you should finish the eight and then maybe wait 10 seconds. There you go. So this is the, okay. I'm gonna, I'll show you actually, I'll try and, I'm gonna, just gonna disconnect round right now. Another way that I like to learn is once I've messed with it, I'll then put in my own comments here. So to add a comment, double backslash, and then I'll say, this delay controls the time between each run of the program. In brackets, after all beeps, slash tones. Because what I'll do is I'll save all of this code and I'll usually like upload it to my GitHub or something, keep it somewhere where, you know, only I can access it. And then when I move forward, you know, in life, <laughs> um, in my studies, then I'll come back and be like, okay, you know, there was that code for the buzzer. Let me try and see if I can shape this to make it mean what I want. And so instead of me having to go through this whole process again, I'm going to just read my, whole, my, my own comments again. So let's make this a thousand again. And then this 1000 here, I'm thinking this is the gap between each beep, if I'm not mistaken. So this duration, this variable here, is the length of time. I'm thinking here, I haven't tested it yet. This is the length of time that the beep goes on for, and this is the length between each beep. So if I make this 100, it should be rapid quickly between each beep. So I'm just gonna connect my ground again. And then now, so we're at 100 here, upload. Ignore this right now. Okay, now stop uploading. <laughs> that is brilliant that sounds fantastic all right so i'm going to change that to 10 now <laughs> you can make proper custom sounds with this this is genius i'll change it to one just for you know, giggles. This sounds like a solid beep, right? Let's make it 50. All right, let's make it 150. It sounds like a Mario level up thing or something. All right, now 500. That actually sounds like the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Li, Fa, Do thing which is that, people, that people do. Okay, just gonna disconnect the ground again. So that was a lot of fun. One last one we're gonna do is to make this a thousand again. And I believe this is the duration. Okay, wait, let's put a comment here first. So our comment is, this is the time between each tone. Smaller equals faster. More combined sound. Okay. And then, so this duration here, let's, so this is, it's normally 500, so let's just, why don't we have a listen to what that sounds like? Just connect the ground again. Hit upload. Ignore this right now, right? So this is normal. So if I make that 50 now, the gap between each sound should be the same, but each sound should go a lot shorter, yeah. So you can hear that, right? So let's make it a thousand so now each sound should be two times the original length yeah okay just disconnect ground and then let's just write a comment here this controls the controls the length of the tone in milliseconds cool okay so we'll connect that back again let's make it the standard 500 
So for those of you that know a bit more about programming, you can obviously do most of these things as variables, as a global or in functions outside of your code, and you, or, and you can just call upon them when you're doing your programming. For example, if you had a robot, if you just have this buzzer here, you can have it so that when it collides into something, it calls upon this specific code. When it levels up, it calls upon a slightly variant different. It passes on different parameters. For example, pass this into this function, uh, like from, you know, a function of crash, detect a crash, and then pass in the value of 50, for example. And you can call upon various different sounds, which is amazing, really. I really look forward to getting that deep into things. So this is usually 500. I want to let's make it 50 so the duration of each sound is very short and then let's make the time between each tone very short make it 100 upload and just connect back the ground again okay ready okay i'm gonna make the time the delay between each sound 50 now it was 100 now 50 Okay, and I'm going to make the duration of each sound 500 again. Actually, wait, let's make it, let's make it a thousand with a um, hundred delay. Okay, and then lastly, if I remove this delay here, basically make it one, we should just get like a constant sound with no delay between the program. So hit upload. There you go. So you just have a constant loop. That's cool, right? Cool. All right. I'm very happy with that. I had a lot of fun with the previous buzzer tutorial that we did in the basic starter kit. And again, for this most complete starter kit, I enjoyed this one as well, so if you did as well, leave a like. One second, probably disconnect it. <laughs> yeah, if you enjoyed this one, leave a like. I appreciate it. Drop a comment below. Let me know if you want to see me go into more detail with this code or if you just want me to skip ahead in the tutorial and maybe do the explanation of the code another time. I think it's nice to combine between because I suppose if you just wanted to just do the tutorial and then skip ahead, you can obviously just skip all of my rambling about the code. And if you enjoy going in into the code, Obviously, you can um, watch that. And another thing that I would appreciate, actually, I, did, I just realized now I didn't, I forgot to do this, this part here, trying to swap out some of the tones. So let, let's try and do that quickly. But let me just as well mention that I'm going to come across a lot of things that I don't really understand or I think I understand and I get it wrong. If you notice, let me know. It's helpful, you know. Right, let's now try and change some of this code. So we've got the list of pitches here. So we've got D5, C5, E5. Let me just make everything normal again. So we've got a thousand here. We've got 500 here and a thousand here. So let's just listen to the normal one again. Hit upload. Okay, all right. So that's normal. So do we have note C1 we do? So we've got note C1. So we've got note C5 normally, right? Let's make it note C1. And then we've got note D5. So it appears we have them, okay, we don't have, do we have D1? We do have D1. And E1, yep, F1. So look, I'm gonna make these all, instead of the D5, I'm gonna make them one. Note C1, note D1, note E1, note F1. Okay, let's hit upload. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it worked. Okay, and then these notes are the G5, A5, and B5 that we didn't change. Okay, so it doesn't seem like that worked. I'll try I'll try just E4, see what happens. So E4, D, oh sorry, C4, D4, E4, and F4. Hit upload and plug in the ground again. Oh, that worked. So I'm going to try to change them now to three. So 
F3, E3, D3 and C3. So you can see it was a slightly deeper tone. So upload. Ready? Yeah. So I think, um, I wish there was a way to, I'm sure there's going to be a way to pause the program. But I think C1 and E1 and D1, etc. did work, but it was just too deep, basically. So I've, ma I've made them all ones again, right? But this time, I'm going to make the sound go longer. Let's make it 1,500 and see if that, if you can hear it. I'm not sure if it's working or not there, I don't know. I couldn't hear a change in the tones between the C1, D1, E1 and F1. I don't know, I'm not sure about that part there, but it definitely worked with 3 and 4, so... And maybe, I mean, play around with some of the F, the CS, FS, AS. Play, with some, play around with some of these other ones, let me know how it goes. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed that one. I really, really enjoyed that one. Like I said, if you enjoyed it too, leave a like um, and subscribe because I'm definitely going to be coming out with more videos. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next one. Peace.